here on Business Incorporated. Let's check in with the Wall Street, where the futures were mostly flat ahead of today's open as investors kept one eye on interest rates and another eye, as you have heard, on Hurricane Michael. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see that there, uh, a bit of a weak opening. S&P 500 futures uh, are almost the same margin, and the Nasdaq uh, also tracking about two-tenths of a uh, percent. Okay, let's check in with the Asian markets very quickly. Mixed today, Australian ASX 200 higher by 0.24%. Greater China market, the Hang Seng Index uh, in Hong Kong up 0.3%. Uh, the Shanghai Composite was lower by 0.18%, and the Zhenzhen Composite declined about two tenths or four percent. In South Korea, the Kospi was in negative 33, 1.02%. So the uh, World Bank IMF uh, meetings in Bali is continuing. The group have expressed concern over the rising level of capital flows and the risk posed to emerging markets across the globe. So are there solutions to emerging risks for these markets in terms of capital flows and rising debt levels? This is what our business correspondent Temple Ashaji sent in today from Bali. As the International Monetary Fund and World Bank Group meetings progress with discussions and presentations of reports in different quarters, one of the analytical sessions for policymakers and regulators is this presentation on capital flows to Sub-Saharan Africa. The fund finds that increasing capital to Sub-Saharan Africa has become a critical source of finance to the continent, with South Africa taking the lead by about 70% but it warns of an impending risk to economies. On one hand, these countries need foreign capital to fill in financing gap, to promote growth, to meet development needs. But on the other hand, these capital flows are less reliable or potentially risky source of finance. They need to be prudent. They need to balance the potential risks and the benefits of capital flows. At the presentation of the Financial Stability Report on Wednesday, the IMF notes that global financial systems are stronger now, but the system remains untested. It remains crucial to strengthen the resilience of the financial system by addressing financial vulnerabilities. Policymakers should ensure that the post-crisis regulatory reform agenda is completed and implemented. They should resist calls for rolling back reforms. Central banks should continue to normalize monetary policy gradually, and they should communicate their decisions clearly. On the case with Nigeria, the IMF explains that current pressures are due to the hike in interest rates by U.S. Fed. Okay, so let's get a bit of a sense, uh, get more insight into that world economic outlook review, a report that is being reviewed all over the world. The CEO of the PIS Group, uh, Christopher. Uh, McKee is joining us uh, live. It's early morning in New York City. Thank you very much for coming through on the program, uh, Chris. So, um, give us your insight into this latest warning from the IMF into where the risks are at the moment. Okay, well, look, I think the report that the IMF has put forward really is, is nothing new. I mean, these are the kinds of things that investors and business and international business have been talking about for about the last six months. Sources of capital flow to emerging markets have been channeled off because of higher interest rates in the U.S. And, of course, we all talk about the tra trade tensions between the U.S. and China. But, you know, one of the things that we've, we've noticed, and this is going back over the last, say, 10 or 15 years, um, trade, trade tensions, there's nothing inevitable about them. There's nothing to say that uh, things between the U.S. and China are going to be necessarily worse in five years' time, two years' time right now. And there are ways to mitigate these sorts of things between the two countries. And I guess this morning we're talking about, you know, more emphasis on negotiating settlements, more emphasis on transparency, less, less, less unpredictability from the U.S. All of these things can play into each other to not present the kind of result that the IMF is telling us about. So how long do you think this new global economic disorder will last? Is this a short-term thing? Is it, are we in a long-drawn, downbeat situation here, yeah. Chris? Yeah, again, I don't think there's anything inevitable. I think, you know, to be quite honest, our indicators probably about a year and a half ago started to indicate some slowing down of the world economy, especially in pockets of Eastern Europe and Europe and, 
and some other areas in, and of course the Middle East and Africa. I think what we're doing now is looking at a normal cycle. Uh, again, bear in mind my comments about nothing being inevitable. Markets are very sensitive now to what the U.S. administration does. In other times, it perhaps wasn't that. But I think we're looking at probably, you know, a couple of years at least of lower economic growth. I don't see a disaster scenario. I think we're much better prepared than we were before. But again, these are normal cycles. These are irritants or risk factors that are now playing into, into, uh, into the markets. And I think we can look at maybe a year or two at least of less than spectacular growth. But the one thing I will add, though, is that this economy, or at least this, this American president, is very in tune with the U.S. economy, which is driving things right now. We have midterms next month, and we also have a presidential cycle that's kicking in next year. And I would be very, very surprised if, if the world economy and the U.S. economy did start to underperform the way that the IMF is predicting that this president wouldn't step in and watch those markets uh, react favorably. But, but, but do you think there are quick win solutions for emerging and frontier markets here to try and... And, and, and ramp up on their own growth very quickly. I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Yes, I was asking if you think there are quick win solutions for emerging and frontier markets to the current risk issues we face. Well, sure. I mean, one of the things that we've always talked about, and I think the IMF was quite um, prescient in this, is that there are pockets of sunshine, if you will, in the emerging markets. I mean, what we tend to do is get clouded with bad news coming from Argentina, bad news potentially coming from Brazil, Turkey, and places like that. If you look at our risk ratings, there are some okay, from a financial and economic risk perspective, uh, countries in at least Africa, from Botswana to Tanzania. One of the things that I think these governments have to do is, at least the ones that haven't borrowed too much during the so-called salad days, is engage or continue to engage in those structural reforms that they've been doing or they should be doing in order to make their business climate more favorable to capital flows. So I don't think you have to say the asset class across the board is in trouble. I think there are some real serious concerns here, but I do think there's some bright spots. So, you know, the kinds of reforms that the IMF has talked about, and the kinds of reforms that most responsible governments in the continent um, are trying to push forward is, is simply what needs to be done. The key is to get investors aware of those bright spots and act accordingly. And I think to some extent they are. I like the sunshine aspect of the conversation. Thank you very much, Christopher McKee. If you have some sunshine today in New York, uh, enjoy it. Uh, the folks in Florida will seem to have a bit yeah, of, a, of, a, of a weather there with Hurricane Michael. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. The CEO of the PRS Group out of New York City to us on the program. Let's check in with the market here in Nigeria when we come back after the break. This is your Business Incorporated.